All right, what does a backup and a cat's affection have in common? You only appreciate them when they're gone. <laughs> Hey, in this video, we're talking about backups. Love them or hate them. They are an important part of life as a creator, just like cats. And so we're going to be going through my backup system, show you exactly what I put together. It's simple, it's safe, it's easy, and it's cheap. So let's get into it and I'll show you how. I remember as I was starting out as a creator, this was really confusing for me because so many people recommended so many options and things were really expensive. If you wanted to get a RAID array like they were suggesting, it was gonna be three, four, five grand to do. And you had all these complicated software programs. And for me, I'm a simple person. I want things to be simple, straightforward, and easy. And so that's why I came up with my situation, which is as easy and portable and cheap as I can make it. So let me walk you through. We're gonna hop over. Here's the whiteboard of truth, justice, and all that is artistic integrity when it comes to backups. And yes, if you want to, you can screenshot this, you can print it, you can put it on your ceiling in your bedroom and admire it at night. I'm okay with that. It's cool, I understand, it's amazing. All right, so the circle of backup begins here at the original shoot. Whatever that is for you, cameras, audio, it doesn't matter. You're gonna be recording your files and then backing them up. Now, the first stage of the backup is actually just keeping care of your original file. So during the shoot, ask yourself, how can I protect this? How can I keep this safe? You're probably not even thinking about that, but if something goes wrong during the shoot, taking those extra precautions being extra careful, that's the first stage of a backup. Might seem obvious, but we're just gonna point it out because people like me miss the obvious. <laughs> so from there, it gets recorded onto an SD card. Obviously, that is a pretty simple step, but you might be using cheap SD cards, in which case, I would again say, the most important step in your backup is actually keeping your stuff safe and making sure that your stuff is going to perform as well as possible. So spend the extra 10 or 20 bucks to get a name brand card, because trust me, I have had cheap cards fail on me. It's not that you need the most expensive version, but just something that is decent, that's important. So the step one of my actual backup backup after I've got my original home is to back it up as soon as possible. I do this right away after the shoot. I do not do anything else. I don't go to bed if it's late at night until my stuff is backed up and there's a second copy of these files. And the reason for that is simple. Life gets busy, <laughs> life gets distracting, and you can take this card and put it in here and just forget and format it and wow, you're in a world of pain. So trust me, you don't wanna do that. Back up your stuff right away. So I back it up onto my computer and then I take the SD card and I put it into this awesome handy little pouch. Isn't that the coolest thing ever? So you can actually get these SD card pouches. And I like to put all of the safe cards like that are safe to use in one side and then all of the don't use these cards on the other side. And then if you've ever looked at an SD card and wondered to yourself, hey, what's this little notchy thing for? Is to protect that card from being written on. So if you actually put this into the lock, lock position, you shouldn't be able to format that card and you shouldn't be able to actually take photos on that card until that's been unchecked. So that's a one more step to keep your stuff safe. I put these into a case separate and I don't format them, I don't touch them. This is my first backup, keeping the original safe. And I'd recommend, if possible, keeping your laptop and your SD cards separate from each other, at least in separate rooms, but definitely in, in some kind of separate situation. And the reason is this, I used to work at an insurance office, which is super interesting, I know. But every night they would take all the paperwork that had been done during the day and they'd make a copy and send it to the other end of town. And why did they do that? So if that house burnt down, if that building burnt down that the insurance paperwork was in, there was another situation on the other end of town that had a backup of everything. You wanna do the same thing with your files. If you're traveling, you don't wanna have your SD card sitting there and your laptop sitting there in your bag. So if your bag gets stolen, you lose everything. Keep things separate. So you can actually have a cloud account sync with your computer that this automatically backs up. So you can have everything in a specific folder sync to the cloud automatically. I think Google Cloud costs ooh, 10 bucks a month. So it's very much worth it to have a cloud version of your files right away. And it's just gonna take care of your backups for you and life is simple and easy. Now the two services that I think are the best out there right now, bang for buck, are backblaze.com and Dropbox file storage plans. Now Backblaze is $99 for the year and they give you unlimited backup sizes. So if you have huge video files that you need to back up, Backblaze might be the one for you, best bang for buck. The only catch is you do have to have your hard drives connected to your computer at least once per month to make sure that Backblaze can update all those files, make sure they're secure, etc. Now Dropbox has some cool features. It's a little bit more money, but for $10 a month, if you're someone who uses less than two terabytes of storage for your backups, which would be me and probably most creators out there, at least to start, that's only 10 bucks a month and it also lets you have a file folder right on your desktop that is available and accessible anytime. However, you don't actually have that taking up space on your computer, it's synced to the cloud. So you can figure out which works best for you, but those are my two picks right now, backblaze.com and Dropbox. You can check those links in the description.
You might be wondering, at this point, why is it that I'm not using a hard drive and why am I putting it directly on my computer? There's a couple of reasons for this. The first is to keep things simple and easy. I like life to be simple and easy, so I got a computer with a larger hard drive that can hold a couple projects at a time. The second is I want things to be organized and kind of sorted before I put them onto a hard drive as an actual backup, which we'll talk about in a second. And the third is life is just a lot more light. I have one less thing to hold on to. I have one less thing to lose. And so I like to simplify and the fourth and final thing is that your computer, if you have a new MacBook, is going to be a lot faster when it comes to reading files if those files are on your internal SSD versus on an external SSD. Why am I saying SSD instead of hard drive? Because this is an SSD which is slightly different from a typical hard drive. A hard drive has a disk and a magnet and it records data by actually spinning that disk Whereas this beauty has no moving parts. So it's more secure, you can drop it and it won't damage it. It's lighter, it's smaller, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's also a lot faster when it comes to reading your files as well. So you can edit off this no problem. Whereas a cheaper, larger hard drive with an actual spinning disc, that's going to give you trouble when it comes to using it to edit. So that's why I put it on my computer and not on a hard drive right away. From there, I edit the project, I organize the project. And before I delete anything off my computer or this secondary backup of my original SD cards, I will back it up onto two other places. So I create two extra backups before I delete anything from my computer or my SD cards. Why? Because just like in rock climbing, if you're climbing, you always wanna have three points of contact on the rock and then you move one limb at a time to keep yourself safe. Why? Because you've got three backups for one that you're risking. <laughs> so the basic idea is exactly the same with your hard drives. You always wanna make sure that you have two or more backups going on. You never wanna go down to one because that's just too much risk. So I take my stuff, I put it onto Google Drive, and then I take my stuff and I put it onto one of these. So I like to buy a nice small SSD at the beginning of every season, and I put one year's worth of projects onto one hard drive. I find that's easy both in terms of organization and also if I were to lose this, break this, have it stolen, I'm only losing one year's worth of projects. I'm not losing 10 years worth. So it's also a little cheaper, that works out too. So I like to bite the bullet and just buy a cheap little hard drive. They're about 80 bucks at this point for, I think this is 500 gigabytes. This might be dated by the time you watch this. So that is my process. From there, I can breathe easy. And my final stage is going to be formatting my cards. And also I like to back up this years folder onto a master drive that has several years worth and kind of everything as a quick access drive. So this is a larger one and I'll have several years on it. And that way it's just easy for me. I don't have to carry around multiple hard drives. I can have my this year's hard drive. I can have my massive hard drive and that's all I need to have everything when I travel. So really light, really simple, really easy. And then of course, everything's on the cloud. So I don't have to worry if I lost these while I'm traveling. So that is my entire backup process. Now, let me show you my file structure really, really quick for how I organize my projects on one of these hard drives. Let's head over here into Finder and hop in to my 2023 drive. So I have everything organized by year. It's labeled right at the top. And then I have everything organized by project type. I just find that simpler. And then from there, I have a template at the very top. So if I have a new shoot and I've gotten home and I've got a wedding for Brittany and Craig, I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna right click my template, duplicate it. And just like that, all of my file structure is going to be saved and it's going to have everything that I need to drag things into without having to create a bunch of new folders every time and it's going to be exactly the same between every project. The key is when you're organizing here, you want it to be so simple that you could hand this off to a stranger and they would be able to understand it. It's gonna save you a ton of time, okay? So I create that off of my template and then I would import all of my footage. So I've got things color-coded, red means not started, orange means in progress, and blue means finished. So if I were to open up Katie and Mike, you can see here, this is what happens when I get home. I literally drag the card into a RAWs folder if it's photo or a footage folder if it's video, and I just label it with the camera that I took this on. So A7 III, R5, organized just like that, and then I go to bed. And the next day, I organize it into rejects and selects, keepers and rejects. And I keep everything because photos don't take up that, that much room for a shoot. So selects are the keepers, rejects are the get rid of them. And I put them all in one folder, all the cameras doesn't really matter to me. I also like to have the Lightroom project inside of that photo folder. And the reason is I can take this entire folder and drag it onto any hard drive I want. And I'll have everything that I need in order to edit these files. I don't have to actually plug in another hard drive or remember to bring something else with me. Same thing goes for video. I'll organize that. I'll have the raw footage sorted by type. So I'll have the bride prep, ceremony, groom prep, speeches, that kind of thing. And I like to have an A cam, a B cam inside of each. 
um, just organizing the camera so I know which angle is which. And I actually do this in Finder. I don't do this in Premiere or Final Cut because for me, I find this is really simple to just go through. Finder has this awesome feature where I press space bar and it will preview the video so I can go through and just figure out what's what or even go by the thumbnails and just separate it into times of day. And that for me is a lot better because then if I hand it off to someone who opens it in Premiere or Final Cut, it doesn't matter. They don't need to be able to use the same file system as I have. They can just drag all these in and it's pre-organized. So yeah, that's my system. It's pretty basic. I hope that it was helpful in some way, shape or form for you in creating your own. You don't have to have a super fancy system. The key is just having a system. So life is organized for you and you have one of these and some kind of cloud account to keep things safe, secure and separate. So that's it. Hope it was helpful. Hit the thumbs up button if you brought you some value and hit that subscribe if you want more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, create something awesome. Peace.